he has so many tools that he tries to use against us to bring us down. He knows what our weaknesses are. There's an evil spirit for everything that's good in this life. There's an evil spirit Amen. on the opposite side of that. And, you know, we've got to know what we are being attacked by. You need to know what's going on in order for you to combat that. This one is a big one. And it's a strong man. And it's the spirit of heaviness. And now Satan uses this tool to bring people down. And you'll understand what I'm talking about as we get into this. Uh, so some of the symptoms of a spirit of heaviness, uh, symptoms of the strong man, is excessive mourning. Now we're going to touch quite a bit on the excessive mourning today because it is a very powerful tool to bring you down. Uh, depression, uh, sorrow, and grief. And you can actually put the excessive mourning and depression, sorrow, and grief all into the same subject that we're doing today. Self-pity, hopelessness, loneliness, disappointment, insomnia even, inner hurts and bruises. But today, we're going to be talking about again, about the mourning and the sorrow and the grief and the depression. Uh, so we're going to start, I'm going to start with Isaiah 61.3. Like I said, I'm not going to be staying here, uh, but I, I am going to use this verse quite a bit today. So, Isaiah 61.3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It is a spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. Now, why are they mourning? So in the deepest part of this, this is when Christ is coming back, right before He comes back. And God's children are mourning. Why are they mourning? Because they're being held in bondage by Satan today if they're not educated and they don't know God's Word and they're under attack. God's children are mourning today as we see all the evilness and the bad things that are happening in this world and they're mourning for Christ's return. Amen. Mm. But they, Satan has people in bondage. Uh, they mourn over the people that you've lost. Those that have no hope. Those uh, people, you know, some of the people that we love. Now, so I said we're talking about the millennium here and the return of Christ. But you know what? We don't have to wait on Christ Amen. to right. end our mourning today. Right. Yes, we have Christ right now. Yes, so why not explore or have the freedom that Jesus is giving us today? We don't have to wait for Him to be here. He lives within each and every one of us. Yes, sir. Right. Hallelujah. Beauty for ashes. We've got to let go. You got to let go of your past. You got to quit beating yourself up over your mistakes. You got to get past the people that you've loved and you're mourning for them today. Because Satan will use it against you. Let go of your mourning. Let God replace your mourning with joy today. It, there's not one worse thing that we go through in this life to lose the people that we love. Amen. And so. I, I tell you, I'm about to blow up up here. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it, it's so hard, and I know it because I've been through it. And I have been through it. I mean, when I've lost some people and I've mourned too long, and man, it went bad. Yes. Um, you've got to get ready, ready, rid of the spirit of mourning. Yes. Let God clothe you today with a garment of righteousness. Yes. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> You're really good. Thank you. Thank you. What is your garment made of? I made a note of this just for the simple fact the garment that you will wear in heaven is put together fiber by fiber and stitch by stitch for the righteous acts that you do in this world today. Yes. So why is that a part of this? And I'm talking about mourning and evil spirits because we can help people yes. by spreading God's Word, Amen. by spreading hope. And guess what? As you are doing that and your garment is being placed and put together for you to wear in heaven, can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Satan tries to take our joy of living by loading us down with heaviness. Yeah. Yeah. 
the heaviness of, of and the burden of each and every day that we get up and we got to go to work and we got to put up with this and we got to put up with that and then you got the evil spirits and the devil whispering in your ear all day long trying to knock you off the path and he wants to give you that heaviness so that you will give up. We have the victory. Amen. He moves in when we are mourning and can keep you in perpetual grief. Been there. Done it. Felt it. It's no fun. It is normal to grieve, but we cannot mourn indefinitely. I'm telling you, that will take you down the dark road. Long-term grief can be very destructive. Some people will say to me, well, brother, you don't understand. I put a note here because it's going to be proud of me what I'm about to say. And some people will say, well, you just don't understand. I said, like hell I don't. <laughs> and hell is in the Bible. Yes, sir. It's in the Bible. <laughs> what you say? It's in the Bible. Amen. We've all lost people that we love. Yes. And we, and we all mourn. Yeah, I, I've, I've had plenty. I've had plenty of my own. I remember as a young child, my mother took me up to the hospital because my uncle had cystic fibrosis. Uh -huh. And I hadn't seen him in a long time. I wish they hadn't taken me up there. But they did. And they wanted me to be able to say goodbye to him. He's only 20-something years old. So I walk in, a little kid, and with the person I was looking at, that ain't the person I knew. That's right. He was this big, his arms were that big around. His eyes were rolling up in the back of his head, and I hit the floor, and I started bawling. As a little kid, it hurt. Do I understand mourning? Yes, I do. When I went to my grandparents' house, my grandfather decided to go out back and shoot himself in the head. Wow. That one, Satan about won a victory over me, about, about destroying my life. I hurt and cried so bad because I looked up to him so much. And it took me two years to come out of it. I turned to alcohol. I was mad at God. Yes. I blamed God. Yes. I was mad at my yes. uncle. Yes. I was exactly where Satan wanted me to be. Yes. Yes. It's dark. It is a very dark place to get when you let yourself mourn too long for the people that you love. Yes, sir. Yes, it stinks. It does. But let me ask you something. Is God asking you to do anything He didn't do? No. Ooh. Did God not in the flesh, Jesus Christ, did He not die in the flesh? Yes, sir. So He's not asking you to do anything or go through anything that He's went through. That's all right. Hallelujah. Yes. Woo! Take your time. Preach, brothers. Take your time. So, you don't think others have lost loved ones as well? We've all done, we've done it. We've all been there. Yes. And, it, and it stinks, but the thing about it is, we got the victory. Amen. They're already there in heaven. Yes, They're already there in the presence of the Lord. But we've got to get up and we've got to keep moving forward. Amen. Again, God is not asking you to do anything that He has not done. Isaiah 53, 4. <clears throat> Surely He hath borne our griefs yes. and has carried our sorrows. Allow the Comforter to heal you and carry away your grief today. I don't know how people live this life and not know God. Come on. Amen. Amen. Because that loss of my grandfather, I'd have been done if it wasn't for God. Amen. But I had to finally look up and He had to pull me up out yes, of there yes, sir. Uh, to get me back on path. But that can happen to you. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. I've known people who have mourned the loss of a loved one for 25 years. Yeah. And man, what a, a negative result and destruction that it committed in their lives because they were too focused in mourning that person. Yeah. We've got to keep our eyes on God. Amen. Amen. We can thank God today because you know what? We're going to see Him again. They got it made. We're the ones that ain't got it made. We're still here. Your grief will cause you to mourn the dead instead of loving the living. Come on. I can't help but think, and I've seen this happen to families, and you see it on TV shows and all these things. Uh, a parent has three children, and they lose one of them. 
Or maybe they got two children and they lose a child. But instead of spending time with the, the, the child that they still got, they spend their life mourning the other. And what does that cause for the child that's still here? Resentment. Yes, sir. It does. Resentment. Yes. The dead are already dead. We got to, we got to live for the living. Amen. Amen. You've even seen that in marriages. People have been married. My parents have been married for 54 years. More than 54 years? <laughs> About 54, 55 years. How many times have you seen one spouse pass away and the other get so consumed in their mourning they really follow right behind them? Yes, sir. They give up. Yes. That's not what God intends us to do. God expects you to get up yes. and move forward. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> This can cause your physical health to be affected Amen. and allows the spirit of fear to come in. So now you've got the spirit of heaviness and now you've got the spirit of fear. You're being double teamed. God's people don't concern their attention on the dead but on Christ. Amen. Proverbs 15.13 A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. But by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Yeah. I have made a note about Brother Randall when I, when I read that verse. Because when you are spiritual and you are spending time with God, you ought to be able to recognize when something else is going on with one of your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Come on. Now he come up in here, and every Sunday he's in here, he's smiling, he's talking, he's shaking hands. But last Sunday when he came in, I could tell he was down. Yes. Yes. And I didn't know why he was down. And I finally just stopped in the middle of our prayer group and I said, Randall, are you okay? And he shook his head, no. So what do we do? We lift him up. Yes, sir. And we pray for him, our brother in Christ. Amen. <clears throat> so you can tell by somebody's countenance when something is bothering them. Now, I've also brought this scripture into this. I'm actually going to, well, I actually got it written down here. And I did a study years ago and it was called 30 Days. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm using this again because you need to understand that there is a time period for mourning and then there's a time to move on. Yes. So if you look at Deuteronomy 34 or Numbers 20, 29, and it says, When all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned. For Aaron 30 days, even all of the house of Israel. Alright, so let's do another one. Deuteronomy 34, 8. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. That 30 days got my attention. First time I come across it. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended at the end of that 30 days. Then what happened? So then when he died, Joshua was mourning the death of Moses. And God come up to him after 30 days and he said, it's time to get up and go back to work. All right. yeah. Why the 30 days? Because 30 in biblical numerics is the blood of Jesus Christ. All right, man. Yeah. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ. You are bought and you are paid for. So we have that 30 days. And why is it representative of Christ's blood? Because you have the blessed assurity that your loved ones are in heaven. That's right. All right. And they are covered by that blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. Isaiah assured us that God wants to turn our ashes or our death experiences into something of beauty. But we've got to let go of the ashes. Yes. We've got to let go of our past. We've got to let go of our addictions. We can't keep looking back because if you're looking back, you're not looking up at God. Come on, that's right. Beauty for ashes. You're not going to get the beauty yes. unless you let go of the ashes. Yes. Amen. Preach. Yes. He does that when He put on the garment of praise and apply the oil of joy to our aching hearts. Yes. That oil, back into the Hebrew, is L A Yah. L is God and Yah is God's Savior. That oil that he's talking about here is the oil of the truth of God's Word. Amen. And if you will apply that to your heart today, He can heal you and help you to move forward Hallelujah. with your life. Yes, no matter if you're mourning the death of somebody, 
Maybe you're mourning because your relationship's broke with your parents. No matter what you are mourning over today, God will give you beauty for ashes. Yes. But you've got to apply the oil of joy to your heart. And that oil is God's Word. Help us somebody, Woo! Yes, Thank you. Thank you, time, brother. This is good. We know death isn't a happy experience for anyone. Yes. And sometimes we just got to come out of self pity. Amen. And I know it's hard, yes. but with the strength of Yah, you will come through. Amen. Amen. But to the believer who views it from the perspective of God's word, it can still make a positive contribution to his growth process in God. Each and every time you overcome a trial or tribulation, each and every time you get up after someone's passed away and you move forward, folks, every time you do that, yeah. you are building a stronger foundation. Because I'm going to tell you something, my granddad died. I lost it. I lost it. But now my dad just died not a year ago, just a little over a year ago. I stood up here and did his eulogy. Now, it about destroyed me when my grandfather died, so how come I handle my dad's death so much? Because I'm stronger. Yes, sir. I'm stronger. I have the blessed assurance of God's promises through His Holy Word. Yes, sir. Yes. Amen. Amen. It doesn't mean we don't, it doesn't mean we forget about Him. That's right. I carry a little bit of fill around with me every day. I carry a little bit of, uh, oh my gosh. Look in the mirror. <laughs> Woo! Let's look in the mirror. They're with you. Yes, That's right. Yes. Every day they are with you. Yes, sir. You never forget them. Hallelujah. But you can't mourn for them the rest of your life. Amen. <clears throat> we put on the garment of praise by thanking God for the time He gave us with our loved ones while they were here Amen. on earth. Yes. Amen. I cherished every bit of the time that I shared with Lee. Yes. As I said, they're with me every day. They're there with me every day. Amen. Something happens or something reminds me of these people, but they're spiritually, or are we not one body of Christ? Yes, sir. Right. What do you say? Yes. One body of Christ. Yes. They're here. They're, here. they're yes. with you. Amen. They're in you. Yes. 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 But we got work to do. Yes, sir. Man, we're still here breathing air. We got up this morning. Yes, sir. Right. So we have got. Like he said, he went and talked to some guy sitting on the porch this morning and invited him to church. Why aren't we doing that every day? Come on. How many opportunities are you letting slide by to invite somebody to church? Yes, sir. I don't care about the numbers in the church. I care about salvation. Y'all right. That's what it is. Saving souls. That's what church is supposed to be for. It ain't about the money. It ain't about how much money you have or what nice house you have or what kind of car you have. We've got to get out and be more mindful to invite people to church. Right. Yes. And I'm slacking into myself. I'm preaching to myself too. Amen, brother. I'll never forget the time that Solon, where is he? At? There he is. Invited Ben and his family at the city park in Waynesboro, and they've been coming to church here ever since. Amen. I mean, you'd be amazed. People are starving to death to feel that Holy Spirit that is within you right now. The chill bumps that you are getting on your arms. They Amen. need hope. Yes, sir. Yes. And we are supposed to get out and teach, yes. preach, yes. invite people. Hit yes. your share button. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to know a bunch of Scripture to witness to somebody. That's right. Yes. That's right. Hit your share button. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you don't have the talent to stand up here and speak or the talent to play music or whatever, can you use your index finger? Yes, sir. Do you know that when you share that with other people that you get credit along with me to bring in them into salvation? Come on. Yes, sir. Amen, brother. Yes, sir. That's right. You don't have to have no great big talent to be a witness for God. Yes. Bring them into somebody that knows God and that knows the Word. Yes. Bring them to somebody that can teach them the Word. Yes, sir. We gotta do a better job. Yes, we do. Some plant the seed, some water. That's right. God brings the harvest. Exactly. Amen. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes. It's not hard. It's not hard. I know you ain't afraid to tell somebody you love Jesus. Oh, all that. Right? Come on. Can I get an amen? Amen. Amen. 
How full would this church be if everybody did what he did this morning? How, church, how full would this church be if, if you did what Sutherland did? Yes, sir. Yes. We got a lot of lost people in the world. Yes. Then they need to know about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it's our job as Christians. It was given to us, and now we need to share it with others. Amen. If they were a Christian, we knew that they were enjoying the presence of the Lord. Oh. To be absent from the body is to be present with God. Amen. Ecclesiastes 12, 7, Then the dust shall return unto the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That's right. The instant they passed from this life, they were in the presence of God. Yes, sir. And I ain't trying to be mean when I'm saying this. They're in heaven. Do you really think they're thinking about you right now? Oh. <laughs> they're in heaven. <laughs> they're with God. I do pray to God sometimes to tell my sister I love her and stuff like that. And I think, I think that message is getting passed on. I really do. But they're with us. They're with us right now. We're going to see them real soon yeah. in the eternity. Sooner than later. They are still a part of our everyday lives and they are in our hearts. Amen. Now I'm going to wrap this up with this verse right here. Revelation 24, and I cannot wait for this time. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There is no tears in heaven. And there shall be no more death. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Woo! Can you imagine heaven to live eternity? You don't ever have to see somebody else die again? Come on. Yes. Is that not awesome? Yes. It might have been somebody that was broken. It might have been somebody that was in a wheelchair, couldn't walk, whatever. And guess what? They're in the beautiful spiritual body today. And we will see them again. No more death. I look forward to that. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the former things are passed away. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen.